check this out. You kidding me? It's running perfect again. Hello and welcome to Reds Optional. My name is Austin and today we're going to be talking about my one year ownership review of my Lexus GX470. If you're watching this video, you're probably in the market for a Lexus GX470 or you're curious if your ownership experience has aligned with mine. Well, to make this video as easy as I can to follow, I'm going to split this up into five separate parts and there'll be chapter markers below so you can follow along or jump to wherever you want. I'm gonna start with the travel that I've done in my Lexus, all the places I've taken it in the last year. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the maintenance I've had to do and the costs associated to keep it on the road. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the mods that I've done, but I have done a whole separate video on that and my future plans for mods. So I'll link that down below. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about my hopes for the next year of what I'd like to do with it uh, as far as more adventures and such. Um, and then lastly, the most important, my thoughts and feelings about owning this car for a year. Stay tuned. I bought this Lexus with about 173,000 miles on it. Um, you're either thinking, wow, that's a lot of miles. Or if you're familiar with this platform, you're probably thinking, wow, what a nice low mileage example. <laughs> um, I have only put about 7,000 miles on it and I did want to get one that had around this amount of mileage because I wouldn't be paying a ton because if you get one that's closer to 100,000 miles, the price goes up pretty quickly. Uh, but I did want something with under 200,000 miles in my mind that's just kind of a big, uh, I don't know, milestone in vehicle ownership and I want to have one that's well below that. Um, I don't commute for work. Currently, I work from home, so I only get to drive this when I want to. Um, that's really great because uh, I'm not piling miles on it, and most of the driving that I've done in it has actually been adventures. Uh, my wife and I have taken this all throughout Arkansas. We've been in the Ozarks. We've been in the Washita's. Uh, we have also gone out to Colorado in this and explored out there a decent amount for uh, a couple days. So, yeah, it's been... Uh, a really, really fun uh, ownership experience. We have taken this on a lot more adventures, honestly, than I thought we would, but uh, it's been great. It's a super, super comfortable vehicle to ride around in, extremely comfortable to travel in on uh, long road trips, and it's still capable enough to get it where we want it to go. So yeah, I really, really like driving around in this thing and uh, I'm excited to take it on more adventures. I'll talk about that here in a bit. So let's talk a little bit about maintenance. So one of the reasons why I bought this specific example of the Lexus GX470 was because the previous owner of it was extremely meticulous. He took very, very good care of it, very detailed notes of the things that he replaced. Um, and because of that, I, I believe that's why my ownership experience, or one of the reasons why it's been extremely, extremely easy. Um, he replaced the timing belt and that's the really big maintenance item that you want to look out for when you're shopping for a GX470. It is typically a couple grand to do that job if you pay a shop to do it. Um, and it is not an easy, super easy job, at least from what I understand. Uh, the previous owner had it done right after he bought it because he wasn't aware of when the last time the belt was replaced. So hopefully I won't have to do that uh, in the next uh, a couple years. I believe the recommended interval is 90,000 miles or every 10 years. Um, everything else that I've done uh, maintenance wise pretty much is all taking place right here. Um, I did tires and wheels. I'll talk a little bit more about these in the mod section. Um, it, but beneath that I swapped the brake rotors, calipers and pads, the GX460. Uh, rotors, calipers, pads are a little bit larger. I uh, can handle the weight of the vehicle a little bit easier. Um, I also did the front axles. The boots were torn when I uh, bought it, so went ahead and replaced those. And then the uh, wheel bearings, that was kind of a while you're in there job. Already having the axles out made sense to replace those. Um, I will throw all of the prices for all of that on the screen so you can get an idea of how much that cost me to do. Um, I didn't use uh, Toyota parts for the brakes or the axles. Um, and then I did kind of the common uh, Koyo or SDK 
uh, front wheel bearing. So I'll throw links and part numbers to everything that I have done up front. So far it's been flawless. I have, haven't ran into any issues with the non-Toyota part numbers. I know some people have some horror stories, but so far it's been really great for me. And then outside of the, the bigger job up front, I have done a couple oil changes, uh, a five tire rotation. Uh, since I bought these, I got a set of five. I think that's it. So outside of the big job I did uh, with the help of some friends shortly after I bought it, um, it has been a, a really uneventful ownership experience. Um, there are a couple things I need to do, but I'll uh, hit on that in my next year hopes. Let's talk a little bit about mods. So I won't touch on these for too long because like I said, I do have a whole video about what I've done to it, what I plan on doing to it. But I have Kenda Cleaver tires up front. These are uh, 255 75s. I have a full set of five and they're on Toyota fifth gen TRD off-road wheels, uh, four runner wheels. I have removed the side steps because I did damage one on one of my first adventures. Um, and then I added the Napa awning that is just drilled into the stock uh, cross, cross rails, bars, I don't know, crossbars <laughs> on, the, on the roof rack. Um, and then I did the Atoto CarPlay touchscreen. Um, I think that's pretty much it as far as mods. I haven't really done a whole lot. These things are very, very capable from the factory and I want to mod it as I go. I have some plans, uh, but I will hit on those a little bit more in my uh, next year's hopes. So let's jump into that. Plans for this year. Uh, it's very simple. I want to use this thing. As you saw in the travel section, I used it quite a bit over the last year. Uh, honestly, probably a lot more than I thought we would. Um, and I just want to continue to uh, explore in it and have new experiences that uh, I couldn't have if I didn't own a vehicle like this. It's the whole reason I bought it. And I recommend that if you have something like it, you should do the same thing. Uh, I, far too often I see people posting on Facebook or whatever saying they built out their rig and they're selling it because they never really found themselves using it. Um, just get out and explore a little bit. Uh, I think it's the whole reason why I bought this could be the whole reason why uh, you bought yours if you're watching. So yeah, uh, highly recommend that. Um, I think the highlight that I'm looking forward to most this year is a trip to Colorado that I've planned um, with my brother-in-law and his family. Uh, so we'll be going out there and exploring some areas that I've never been to before. So let me know if you want a video on that. I'm kind of back and forth on, on whether or not I want to spend the time to film uh, that trip. Um, and then outside of that, I just have a few maintenance and, and mod items I'd like to knock out. Um, I like to do the sleeping platform prior to that trip uh, this summer. Just want to make it a little bit more usable, add some drawers, maybe a fridge, make it easier to take in and out because right now this one's kind of a pain. Um, and then on the mod side, I'd like to do uh, a lift primarily just to replace the bags in the rear that are known to fail. The previous owner did swap those out not too long before I bought it. So um, I'm not super pressed to, to put that on and I don't think I need a lift for a lot of the stuff that uh, I like to do as far as the level of difficulty of trail I enjoy. Um, and then I'm gonna do some recovery points up front just for kind of that additional peace of mind. And then I need to do a valve cover gasket. That's probably the big maintenance item that is uh, on the to-do list this year. Um, yeah, outside of that, like I said, I just, I just want to use it. I just want to get out there and explore. So let's talk about my thoughts and feelings. I absolutely adore this thing. If you are considering buying a Lexus GX470, I highly recommend it. The community is phenomenal. There's so many helpful, passionate individuals out there that are more than happy to help if you have questions about working on your car, what modifications you should do to it to uh, build it out for your needs. There's so much great information on this platform because I do think it is a really well-rounded platform for folks that want to get into overlanding or off-roading, uh, but it still works as a daily driver. Uh, it's still remarkably comfortable. Even on long road trips, it's really, really great. Uh, so yeah, I have zero regrets buying it. I came from a 2016 uh, Ford Fiesta ST, so about as opposite as you can get to something like this. And while there are definitely times where I miss driving a fun car, 
the experiences that this has allowed uh, me and my family to enjoy is absolutely worth the trade-off in my opinion and something that I am very, very happy I tried. And I don't think I'll be getting rid of this thing anytime soon. Maybe, maybe ever. I don't know. I guess these things are supposed to go like half a million miles. So maybe I'm stuck with it. I don't know. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Definitely leave a comment down below if your ownership experience has aligned with mine at all, or if this video is helpful in making a decision of whether or not you want to own one of these things. While you're down there, we would really appreciate it if you dropped us a like and subscribe if you want to see more content with my GX470, my brother's LJ Jeep, what is it, a Wrangler, I guess, Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> and then obviously we featured a lot of other rigs on this channel if you've been watching, and we are going to continue to do that as well. We really, really appreciate you watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.